Hi everybody, I'm Dave Cook from the Eno River Association. We're on a multi-day journey up and down the Eno River to find the fantastic fishes of the river. There are so many cool fishes from big to small, from bottom to top, shallow water to deep water, and we want to show you some of what you can find in the Eno. <laughs> Today's travels to find the fantastic fishes of the Eno have brought us to West Point on the Eno. West Point on the Eno is a city of Durham Park. The river travels through it for about a mile and a half. And helping me today is Julie Thompson. Julie, uh, you may know as the naturalist from Eno River State Park. Kick netting is a great way to catch fish on the Eno. We set up a net, a couple of us holding it down at the bottom of a rocky, fast running riffle in the river. We get somebody upstream, in this case, our photographer Michael. He kicks up the rock, stirs the fish around, gets them spooked, they get caught in the fast flowing water, it carries them down into our net, and we've got them. There's a darter. All right, with uh, Michael's help, our photographer, we uh, did kick netting and caught this beautiful Roanoke darter. Darters are real common in the riffle areas where we were kick netting. Uh, there are about seven different kinds of darters here in the Eno. We actually caught two. Here's another little one over here. The first one I showed you is a full grown. So this guy is only about half grown. Uh, they live on the bottom. They're in the perch family. So you think of perch and uh, you think of the ones you go fishing for. But uh, these guys here don't get any bigger than this so we're not gonna go fishing for them. They feed on the bottom. They eat little insects that you find up under the rocks. And they like that swifter moving water. The Roanoke darters are actually the most colorful darters that we have in the Eno. We've actually come during their breeding season. They don't make nests. This time of year they lay their eggs in the gravelly bottom of the river. Near our kick netting site is submerged fields of native water willow. This important plant provides habitat and food for our river fish. Julie and Michael and I have come to a deeper hole in the river here at West Point on the Eno. We're going to put our seine net in the water. Let's see what we find. We caught a lot of pine wood shiners on this one, and you know that's normal, uh, especially during this breeding season. We see a lot of these males gathered up, and of course uh, we know the males because they've got those bright red heads. Um, we also look for a little white patch on the top. That doesn't mean they're a male; it just helps us tell us that, that they're a, a pine wood. Uh, they uh, are gathering up. Of course, they're they're wanting to breed, and they want to breed on the nest of a chub. We've got bull chubs and bluehead chubs here in the Eno, and they build big rock nests, uh, big piles of gravelly rock uh, uh, and uh, moving currents. And the uh, shiners, such as pinewoods and some of the others, will actually come and make a nest or breed. There we go, buddy. Will breed over those nests and into those little piles of gravel.
This is the only comely shiner that we've caught on our fantastic fish's travels on the Eno. You know, these guys like to be in headwater creeks, small rivers, in the pools and runs with a sand or rock bottom, so the Eno is just perfect for them. They eat insects, mostly the larval insects of aquatic insects that are under the rocks. They'll also supplement that with some of the plant material and algae that you find in the river. Today's fantastic fishes of the Eno journey has brought us to the Panther Branch Natural Area. We're west of Hillsboro, and this is a more than 50 acre tract the Eno River Association owns. And we bought it a couple years ago to protect the river, protect the land, the wildlife, and provide conservation, protect the water quality. And we're holding on to it. We hope one day to open it up to the public. But today, you're going to get to see what kind of fish are in the creek and the river here at Panther Branch. So this is the actual panther branch. Uh, we're gonna take a little time while we're here to explore it. The creeks that feed into the Eno River have lots of fish as well, even the very smallest streams. You'll be surprised what can be there. And some of them are very different from the fish out in the main river. So let's see. So yesterday I came out ahead of time and set a minnow trap down here in the creek. Uh, the best time to set traps is at night. The fish are, tend to be more active at night. So we're going to check it. I do want to point out, I've got somebody helping me today. This is Emily, also from the Eno River Association. And uh, so let's take a look and see if anything climbed in. Oh yeah. Okay, we're checking our trap here down in Panther Branch. There is one fish in it. I'd love to have a whole bunch more, but we're going to take a look at what we've got. A couple of things. Let me explain to you a little bit about how the trap works. It's got funnels. And so the fish come in looking for the bait, which is what's in this little contraption inside. And they aren't, <laughs> for some reason, smart enough to figure out to go back to the funnel. They keep trying to go out through the bottom and around the side, so they're trapped inside. Um, I'm just using chicken livers for bait. Now, when you're handling the fish, and I don't know if I'll need to handle them, but just in case, I'm going to wet my hands. And we're going to keep the fish good and wet because he can't breathe if he's not wet. And we're going to get him out of the trap, put him in this bucket so everybody can see him. Go. And we're going to let Emily bring them over to you where you can see them. I always wet my hands before I handle the fish. They've got a slime on them that's actually a protective layer, so it's not just to keep slime off me, which that works, but it also keeps it from coming off them and prevents them from getting an, you know, an infection. So we're going to pull this little guy up where you can see him a little better. This is a creek chub. Oops, there are lots of them in the creeks along the Eno. They like to eat along the bottom and eat the little insects that are up under the rocks. It's always amazing to me, some of our creeks are intermittent. They uh, will dry up in uh, you know hot summers and yet still once the uh, once the water returns we still have creek chubs and they've adapted to that kind of thing. Emily and I were successful. We have same the panther branch and we actually caught a couple of shiners. They're down here in the net. We've got two different kinds. I'm going to uh, bring up the net here where you can see them. We're not going to keep them out of the water very long. That's why we have the bucket here. There we go. And two shiners. This one right here is a pine wood shiner. He's starting to get red. See that little bit of red on his snout? That would be a breeding male. And I'm going to have to look this guy up. 
to tell you what kind of shiner he is, so we'll check him out here in a minute in the book and make sure we're telling you the right thing. All right, we've caught a white shiner. These are abundant in the Eno and they come up in the creeks. Let's bring them up where everybody can see them a little bit better. And he doesn't get much bigger than this, might get up to about four inches long. Uh, they, they eat a lot of insects, but uh, there are a lot of other fish that eat them. So, you know, the bass and the, uh, the gars, everybody, uh, they like to eat this guy. So, uh, and they're abundant, and that's what we need with a, a fish that provides food for other and, uh, fish for them. One thing the pine woods have in common with the white shiners is where they lay their eggs. So we have chubs that come up in the river and in the creeks, and they build big nests out of rocks. They'll actually make big mounds of gravel uh, for laying their eggs. And these guys don't build their own nests. They go over to the chubs' nests and lay their eggs in those nests. We're happy. We caught something. In the rocky, sticky Eno River, we still managed to get the same net across and catch a fish. Now, these are real popular for fishing here in the river. Um, and they're fun to catch. Uh, if you like to eat fish, they're good to eat. Um, they eat a lot of, you know, bugs and, and smaller fish. They uh, are also prey to the bass and to the gars. I get a lot bigger than that. Here in the river, they don't tend to get as big. The Eno's not a big river. So uh, if we catch one here that's half a pound, that, that's a big one in the Eno. Of course, out in the world, they can get up, uh, you know, as much, sometimes as much as a couple of pounds uh, or even larger, but that's pretty rare. This is the popular fish that you find in farm ponds. We're going to put him in the water a minute. He's got to breathe. You know, fish have gills and they breathe by the water passing through their gills um, and there's oxygen in the water which their gills absorb so they do have to have it go through a fish like a bluegill can force the water through their gills so they can be still and still get water moving through their gills while they're doing that you know it's kind of cold standing in the water but the thing about fish is that they like cooler temperatures in the water than we do so this is not the kind of day that we would go swimming in the river but, uh, but fish like this. Uh, when it gets too hot for them, they actually don't get, they get very inactive. So this is actually called a warm water fish and, and in the Piedmont rivers like the Eno, these are considered warm water areas for freshwater fish, but warm is relative. Warm for fish is not necessarily warm for us. Something jumped out. Alright, see what we can catch. Bring us on all the way to shore here. Let's see if we can trap it. Ah oh, man! <laughs> see if we can get anything in here that doesn't jump out. There's a bass. Where? Right there. He's in our net. Pick it up, pick it up. Got him. Right. Got I got a bass down here. I think it might be the same one. Okay, yeah, he flipped away. Yeah, just uh keep the two oh, oh keep the two pieces of the net together. Oh. <laughs> All right, large mouth bass. Wow. All right. Yeah, the, the main game fish anyway of the Eno River. And you can see lots of them and they can get big. I've seen them as big as eight pounds here in the river. Alright. Now this one, he's about 12 inches long and they get like I said bigger than that they're the main predatory fish here in the river now here's what a lot of people don't know people assume that this is a native fish to the Eno River because you find them everywhere 
The reason we've got largemouth bass in the Eno is because people have stocked them into their ponds that feed into creeks that feed into the Eno. So, you know, if you had been here 150 years ago, I don't think you'd found any largemouth bass in the river. Uh, they are native to North America and uh, they've naturalized here and uh, they're a lot of fun to catch. Um, they uh, compete with some of the other things that are in the river like the Roanoke bass and the, uh, the, the gars. Yeah. Now you're seeing why they call them a large mouth bass. They have got a big mouth and that's so that they can scoop up the prey. Uh, we caught some white shiner and a pine shiner earlier. That would be the kind of prime prey for a large mouth bass. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna let our bass go. Um, we wanna be careful that he's not hurt. It's not good to just fling a fish out into the water. Um, they're a little traumatized when you catch them, whether it's on a hook and line or in a net like this. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna set him gently in the water. We're gonna wiggle him around a little bit so the gills get some air in them, and there he goes. Today's travels on the uh, Eno to see the fantastic fishes has brought us to the Cave Lands area of Eno River State Park. We're just a few yards away from the Mountains of Sea Trail, also known as the Laurel Bluffs Trail, and I've got several helpers with us today from the State Park. I've got Julie, you may know as the Park Naturalist. We've got Ranger Aaron, and from the Eno River Association, I've got Kim, our Conservation Director. Yeah. So yesterday afternoon I came over here to the cave lands and I set a couple of fish traps. We're going to check one now, see if they've got anything for us. And we do. So I'm going to hand this up to Aaron. This is a little red ear sunfish. Some people call them a shell cracker. That's one of our southern names for it. Uh, there are a wide variety of sunfish in the river. Most of them are actually really not native to the river. So the shell cracker or the red ear sunfish, thinking Kim's gonna keep putting them back in the water because he's gotta breathe. He can't breathe if his gills dry out. So the shell cracker would not normally been found in the Eno. It's here as a result of stocking and not actually stocking the Eno River, but actually maybe stocking the farm ponds that feed the river through little streams. They're a very popular fish uh, for the fishermen to catch, a very popular game fish, and they can get up to several pounds, though in the Eno, which is generally a shallow river, they tend to be under a pound. We have caught a musk turtle and a small fish. <laughs> So we'll get a bonus species over here. Carry that over to them. You may have to untie it there too to get it to them. We've caught a couple of turtles in our trap. This is why we always leave a gap, an air gap at the top of our trap because the turtles have got to breathe. These are musk turtles, also known as stink pots. And yeah, they will stink up your hands if you handle them. Uh, they're real common here on the Eno, and they're kind of neat because they'll actually climb up on the branches and trees and uh, you'll be walking around on the river and you will see them plop into the water. Here we go, buddy. All right, we got a very young stink pot slash musk turtle. Lots of these on the Eno. If you're walking along and you don't see a turtle, but you hear something plop out of a bush into the water, that's probably what you're hearing. Uh, they eat bugs. They eat vegetation. Uh, they eat dead stuff. Oh, yeah, he's opening his mouth for us. We can see what's inside there. Pretty omnivorous. He's got the covering on his back of algae, makes it harder for predators to see him. When in real little, uh, a big bass might eat him, or a heron, but uh, as they get bigger, they get tougher. Hey, we caught some more white shiners, another creek chub. We've seen these before, so we're gonna let them go. We'll let them go gently, 
Shiners in particular can get stressed as they tend to dump electrolytes when they're caught, so we want to be careful with them. We're changing our tactics with the same net. We've been using our net to pin the fish up against the bank. Now we're going to take the net, put it up against the bank at one end, make a V, and have Julie herd the fish into our net and close the net back up around it. Yeah, these ones with the red faces are the pine wood shiners. Those are the breeding colors. And it's very often that you do find them in schools. And there's our creek chub. We found him before. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here we go. That is a swallowtail shiner right there. There's something we haven't seen before. So let's dip everybody a little bit, get them some water. All right, there we go. Yeah. One of the many kinds of shiners here in the river, a swallowtail. And you can see that, uh, if you can see his tail good there, in my hand, how it's a very fork. It's got a big fork. I'm so excited we found a northern hog sucker. Don't ask me where they get their name. There ain't no hogs in the Eno. And what these guys eat are aquatic insects, uh, small snails, little crayfish. And they do it in the rocky, fast-moving riffles of the river. That's where they're happiest. Uh, they like clean water. They're adapted to feed in the moving water. And they actually use their long shape and they have a concave head. And they'll push up rocks and that stirs up their food. And you know, other fish will follow along behind them trying to catch some of the food that the hog sucker is stirring up. We've got another white shiner in this net. Here's Dave taking a break. I can't hear a word you're saying, but I'll take the word for it. This is great, we call it a black jump rock. Jump rocks love the Eno River because they like uh, runs and riffles that have rubble and gravel as well as sand bottoms. They even like the sort of fast deep areas around the bedrock and the boulders. Now the black jump rocks, they feed on the bottom, sometimes in groups. Uh, they like to eat aquatic insects and water mites. Uh, they're not real big fish. They grow to up to about seven and a half inches. Now black jump rocks are pretty much exclusive to north central North Carolina and south central Virginia and we're glad they make the Eno River their home. Another fish that likes the fast water of the Eno is this bull chub. Bull chubs are actually minnows but they can grow over a pound in the Eno River. These are the fish we keep talking about that build the rock mounds that the shiners like to lay their eggs in. Kick netting got us another creek chub. We're finding these all over the Eno. Caught us another darter, another Roanoke. There's seven different kinds of darters in the Eno. I've seen six of them. I've never seen a glassy darter. Now all these fish we caught kick netting love to live in the rapids. Man, we have had a great time looking for fish in the Eno River. There are so many fantastic fishes. Matter of fact, there's over 60 different kinds of fish in the river. Now, we've only caught a small portion of them. And I can't give you an exact number because actually it's a moving target. You see, there's some fish that haven't been found in a long time. Back in the 1940s, they found a fish called the Carolina Mad Tom, just one in the Eno. It's a rare little catfish with little stripes on it. We still find them down the news, but we haven't seen one here in a long time. But we still count it as being here. There are some fish that got stocked places, ended up in the river, but they're gone too. So back when Falls Lake was stocking striped bass in the lake, some of those actually used to come up in the river. But we don't see those anymore. There are other fish that have been restricted. So at one time, 
we would find all through the river here redfin pickerel, chain pickerel, shad. Now you only find those below the West Point Dam. It probably acts as a barrier for them coming up, as well as there might be competition for the largemouth bass that we looked at that were later introduced into the river. For more than 50 years, the Eno River Association has been protecting this gorgeous river. We worked very hard to save the park lands and the natural areas all along this fantastic place. And by keeping a forest around this river, it is one of the cleanest rivers in North Carolina. A free-flowing stream that has kept most of its fish species. We have such a wide diversity and they can stay here because we've taken care of this place. And we hope that all of you want to join us in protecting this great treasure.